uh, hello, this is Private Max Early, broadcasting on day 18 of the disturbance. Bunker number 2178, location was undisclosed to me. I've lost contact with my team. I have no radio communication. Radio is completely dead. And, uh, I believe the creatures may still be out there. I'm going to check the security feed now. Yeah, we can see that there's a couple there. Just, they won't leave. They're just lingering around. I have no idea where my team could be. I'm running out of supplies and I've heard nothing from my team at all. I don't know what's going to come of me. Wait a minute. What's happening over there? Let me check out the other feed. Let me switch the camera view. Oh my gosh. I think that's... I think that's Dan. Oh my gosh. Let me see if I can handle him on his radio or body cam. I gotta patch this through this TV. Oh, the equipment in here is just ancient. Oh wow. No, I'm pretty sure Dan's dead. Somebody come and help me, please. Private Max early out. Alright, so obviously this video we're going to discuss the security camera and security monitor behavior. Hope you enjoyed my little skit. I'm practicing my acting ability. So let me kind of back up a step and talk to you about what I have set up here. As you can see, I'm using the booster pack. Uh, it's a military booster pack that I got a long time ago. And they had a, 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 a pre-built uh, level. So I figured, you know what, I'm just going to use it. In fact, if you happen to have this particular uh, booster, I would highly recommend taking some time to really walk through and examine the way this is set up because it's really well done uh, but I've, I've modified things a little bit i added another computer here and a few other things uh, just for the the scene and uh, we'll start with the security camera first let me just zoom on out here so i've attached this camera this camera was out there to begin with i just attached it so let's take a look you should have this asset in max and this is the security camera behavior. So we'll just walk through this together. So we have um, a prompt text that really only applies if the camera is alerted. And the way a camera is alerted is if it sees the player. So that text would really only apply if you want the camera to be scanning for the player. Um, you have the scan range here, which is the number of units away from the camera. So if you want, if you do a shorter distance, uh, then you have to be pretty close to the camera for it to pick up on you. The scan re uh, radius is just the uh, panning motion that we saw in the first camera where it was just going back and forth. You know, you can set that to whatever degree you want. I just chose 140, so it would be, you know, relatively short, but give me a, a good broad view. Scan speed, so you just the how fast does it scan back and forth. Um, the alarm, again, has to do with whether or not it's alerted. So if it sees the player and alarm is on, then that's going to sound an alarm and you have some sound slots. So you can put those there. We have the alarm range. That's going to be how far away from the camera is it sending this alarm. So in other words, if you have enemies in the area, they're going to hear that alarm if it's sounded. And so how far away can they be from the camera and still be alerted? And then visibility uh, is just whether or not the camera is visible to the player. Uh, so the camera itself is actually fairly simple to set up, but I want to point out one really cool thing about the camera. I'm going to go over here to this other position. You can see I kind of set this up so I could see the zombies. And I'll, I'll point out that even though I've got the camera here, I don't have any behavior set up on this camera and I'll explain why in a second. I also don't have any uh, camera behavior on the body itself. I think what I used was like a battery. It's in here somewhere. <laughs> I buried it deep so the, the perspective would be correct. Uh, let's go inside here. 
All right, so the way that works is with the monitoring. So we're going to talk about camera one first, but we're going to get to what I was talking about with it being there being no ca uh, camera behavior and still being able to operate as a camera. Because I think it's a really important nuance to this behavior that just makes it amazing. Um, so let's start with just the basics of the monitor, right? So we're talking about camera one again. We have some prompt text e to, to uh, use the camera, Q to X to the camera. We can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. The usage range, obviously, is just how far away can you be from the object that's the monitor. And it doesn't have to be a, a computer monitor. As you saw, I set up a TV. It could be anything. Um, so whatever you've got that, that attached to. Here's where it gets really kind of cool. So we have the camera HUD. Inbuilt is just what it comes with. And we saw the camera one is an example of inbuilt. So go back and look at that if you want to, but it's that's the way it's going to look if it's inbuilt. If you choose custom image, then it's going to reference whatever image is here. Now this image came with Mac, so I just left it alone, but that's the image we saw in camera two. Um, or we could reference a HUD screen. Now, if we reference a HUD screen, we have to tell it which HUD screen. So that's why this prompt is here. It says, you know, you're supposed to put the name of the HUD screen and then it's going to use that as the, the camera. So you don't have to necessarily create an image. You could mock up a HUD screen that way instead. So that alone is really, really cool. Um, then we scroll past all that. We get to the camera angle. So if I just selected forward, it would just be looking straight on um, from the camera view. I chose 15 degrees down because I wanted to be able to see the zombies a little bit better. Um, you can see there's a multiple different angles that you can choose, including backwards. So you could even have it facing behind the, the camera. Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure what the circumstances would be for that, but you know, might come up, might be useful. And in, uh, in fact, 90 degrees up is what I'm using for the body cam, which we'll see in a moment. Angle uh, cycle key. This checkbox, when checked, is going to add some additional prompt text um, underneath it. And what will happen is you'll be able to press R and R would be able to cycle through the different camera angles. So if I enabled that and I pressed R, I'd go from 15 degrees to 45 degrees and so on. Um, but I had this uh, disabled in this, in this case. I have it enabled on the next camera. Camera feed Y, that's going to be how far above the object that is your camera is it going to, um, is it going to see, right? And I'm going to show you an example of that. I left all that stock and default, and I ended up burying the body cam object down uh, below the ground. It probably wasn't necessary. I could have probably just changed the camera feed Y to like zero. And then that would have been, you know, uh, directly at the object. Um, but I kind of wanted to explain a little bit more about that. So we'll get into that more in a second. Uh, the camera name. This, I think, is probably the coolest part. This is my personal opinion or one of the coolest parts. There's actually a couple of things I love about this, this behavior. But you can select the name of the object that is the camera. Now remember, we're looking at security monitor behavior. So that means that anything can be a camera. Even something that doesn't have the behavior of camera can be a camera, right? So we can just name anything. I can make that box a camera or that door a camera or anything, right? Um, the camera target name, if I, if I type something specific in there, the specific name of an object, that would be the focus of that camera and it would follow that object so i could type that in and it it would uh it would only focus on that one object all the time and then obviously the sound i just put a little short little click in there so like when i turn on the monitor go click um, now incidentally just bear in mind that click is not just for turning it on it's also for turning it off so if you have some other sound you know just keep that in mind it's gonna it's gonna play every time you interact with it whether you're turning it on or turning it off okay so let's take a look at security camera two uh, this one's you know slightly different i use the uh, inbuilt again we could use the custom image um, and it would look like this 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, we have the camera facing forward initially, but you can see that I checked the box for angle cycle key, and that allowed me to switch the camera's perspective ever so slightly so I could see better on the zombies that were munching on my, my buddy Dan. See, so here I'm referencing security camera too. So that's obviously the object's name uh, that I'm referencing. And if you'll recall, as I showed you before, that object doesn't have the security camera behavior on it. So what that means is the security camera behavior is really only important if you want the security camera to move. Okay, so like in this case, with this camera, we have attributes such as the scan radius and the scan range and so on. Those things aren't you know, always going to be needed or desired even. Uh, you know, I, I played around a little bit with this and tried to get the camera to be stationary. Uh, but as you can see, the camera speed's minimum value is one, right? So if I made the scan radius say, you know, one or zero or something like that, and the scan speed was one, it's just going to go uh, back and forth. It's going to pop back and forth. In fact, let's just take a look at that and show exactly what I'm talking about. So that's the minimum value I can put in scan radius is uh, one, and scan speed is one. And this is camera one. So let's go take a look at that real quick. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So it's just going to shake back and forth. Now, you know, maybe you have a, a nice windy day and that's exactly what you're going for. But if I wanted a stationary camera, I'm going to stop that so we don't get sick. <laughs> so if I wanted a stationary camera like I have on the other side or the body cam, I'm not going to use the security camera behavior at all. I'm just going to use the security monitor and that's going to eliminate that shake back and forth and just give me a steady camera viewpoint. Okay. So let's see here, angle key. I don't think there was anything else about this particular behavior. So then I, I switched rooms and I went in here, but honestly, this is just for, you know, the storyline of it, very much the same. Obviously I changed the prompt, uh, the text, uh, prompt text, and uh, I named the camera body cam. So let's go take a look and see what that is. But notice here that the camera feed y is still 20 i left that alone right so if we go out here where is it ah, right over here here's our two lovely zombies now i'm gonna have to use this to locate the object which i think i just added a battery because it's nice and small and you can see not only is it you know the perspective uh from his like head but it's buried under the ground it's buried 20 y under the ground or something like that right so the point is is that i didn't have to do that i could have just changed the y perspective and and i wanted to show this to show what that would do what that would mean so if i had that at zero it would be in the ground i'd, I'd only see in the ground um and i'd want to i'd want the the object that is my camera to be up higher like this um but you know, play around with it. That actually took me quite a lot to dial in and get just right as far as location. Um, so I think it's going to be a matter of playing around with it, change the the angle of the object so that it's facing where you want it to go. Um, it's just going to take a little work to, to get it right, but I think you can do it. Uh, but that is everything there is to know about the security camera and security monitor. But I want to point out one very important point that has to do with this behavior before before i end the video by being able to name the object you know that we want to be our camera and knowing that it doesn't need to be a camera or it doesn't need to have the security camera behavior attached to it that means that we can now change our perspective to be anything right so theoretically if we had a enemy walking down a hallway uh, we could add uh, the uh, security monitor behavior to something name that enemy as our security camera and look through the perspective of the enemy walking down the hallway right or it could be a drone flying through the air i mean the you know the possibilities are limitless and i think that's the thing that i want you to understand about security monitor before i end the video uh, but that is it that's everything there is to know 
If you liked the video or if you learned anything new, uh, please be sure to click the like button below. If you're new here or if you haven't yet subscribed, now's a great time to do so. I'd love to have you. And if you'd like a notification for when I post new videos, just click the bell icon. It'll let you know when new videos are posted. Thanks so much for watching all the way through, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.